We see Bitcoin going up, etc. Does that concern you? Or do you think that well, that makes sense? Well, I mean, sense? I don't own I don't own these stocks. Um you know, that's a very narrow group, the Magnificent 7, although some of those stocks, you know, seem to have broken down a bit, so maybe it's only four or five of them that are still magnificent. But um yeah, people are going to get hurt, you know, in these names. I mean, certainly they're, they'll benefit from AI, but um, I think, you know, a lot of that has been more than priced into these stocks, at least, you know, the, the short-term benefits. And there's a lot of lot of problems that are that are overhanging uh, the economy and the markets. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people rushed into these stocks if they want to get out. You know, you don't have uh, the buying there. Um, you know, Bitcoin, I think, is part of the, uh, you know, the 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 the, uh, the move to speculate and gamble, which is obviously what's going on. But Bitcoin kind of had its own narrative with all those ETFs being launched. You know, now there's a dozen or so Bitcoin ETFs. And so there was a lot of hype there that led to that rally. Uh, predictably, when the ETFs were launched, it was a sell the news event and they all dropped about 20 some odd percent uh, very quickly. They've recovered and made new highs, I think, on the back of, you know, uh, some renewed speculation. I think this uh, ETF conference down in Miami that's going on right now, there's probably a lot of hyping. And from my experience observing Bitcoin over the last several years, you know, there are constant you know, times where there's hype, where there's an opportunity uh, for people to pump it up. I want to capitalize on that. They expect there to be some follow through. Um, and, and so, you know, I think that this, you know, now that, you know, when this conference ends, which is Valentine's Day or, you know, maybe the hype will end before, but I would expect uh, the market to sell off. You know, Bitcoin got above 50,000 already. I, I wouldn't expect, you know, much more upside. I, I think it has a lot of, lot of, lot of resistance up in this area. Um, why? And, uh, Hold on. Let's talk, let's talk about ETFs that. There, you know, I just I, 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 I just don't see where the next catalyst for the rise. I mean, unless the ETFs ignite a whole new group of buyers, I just don't think they're going to bite. All right. I'll take the bait. Ready? I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen over the coming uh, months. You tell me what you agree with and what you disagree with. Uh, Bitcoin, which really the long term trend is just the more they print money, the more that uh, hard assets or, or kind of finite supply assets are going to benefit. Gold, uh, I think, will continue to do decently well, although the returns are small compared to Bitcoin. Uh, but Bitcoin and gold will both benefit from the undisciplined monetary policy. Uh, but now that we have the ETFs, there is $500 million a day of net inflows into these vehicles. We're a month out, right? So they got approved a month ago. It's not like it got approved yesterday. We're still getting $500 million a day. There's only 900 Bitcoin a day being produced by the network. So 12.5x more demand than what the network is creating on a daily basis. And then we are heading into we're about 70 days away or so from the Bitcoin halving. So that 900 Bitcoin is going to get cut to 450 Bitcoin. And so if you have only $20 million or $25 million of Bitcoin getting created every day, but you have $500 million trying to find Bitcoin, the price has got to go up to accommodate everyone, right? How many Bitcoin is already in circulation right now? Good question. So right now, that, there, there's, hold on a second. Right now, there's just over 90% of Bitcoin that's in circulation. But of all 21 million Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, of all the uh, Bitcoin that's in circulation, 80%, it's like 79.5% of that has not moved in the last six months. So that is an illis, uh, Ill, inelastic supply. People are holding it. They're not willing to sell it. And so really you only have 20% or so that is tradable. So at a trillion dollar asset, you've got about $200 billion. But the way I think about it is the Bitcoin ETFs, if they've sucked up $10 billion already in 30 days, that's 5%. Does that include whatever left Grayscale? That's that's all net inflows, correct. If you include Grayscale, Grayscale's got another 20 billion. So now you've got $30 billion in these ETFs, including Grayscale, 10 billion without uh, grayscale and there's only 200 billion that is actually tradable like this thing is highly illiquid and you have all of this inflow coming and the havings well, on the horizon yeah, i might you, convince you today to buy bitcoin yeah i mean i can certainly see that there is potential if enough uh in people 
you know, FOMO into this thing uh, just out of greed. I mean, look, people do a lot of dumb things, you know, Bitcoin rally to a hundred grand, you know, or more. Sure, it can. Do you think that that's going to happen? Do you think Bitcoin's going to go to 100K? I, I, it probably won't, but I'm just, I mean, it could. But I just don't think there's enough upside anymore in Bitcoin for it to be interesting to anybody. I mean, there there are plenty of other things that you can buy that have more upside than Bitcoin. Not gold. But, well, I think gold does have more upside than Bitcoin long term. But do I think, look, do I think gold is likely to double in the next year or two? Probably not. I mean, it could. But gold stocks could. They could triple. They could quadruple. They're super cheap. You know, it, it, yeah, there was a lot of potential, you know, and not that I took advantage of it. But, you know, when Bitcoin was, you know, under a uh, 1,000 or under 100, wherever, even, you know, when it wasn't constantly talked about uh, when, you know, people were, you know, most of the Wall Street community was bashing Bitcoin back then. I wasn't, you know, alone. Everybody was bashing Bitcoin. All the big names were saying it was ridiculous, you know. So nobody really was owning it. You know, there there was no uh, uh, El Salvador or MicroStrategy. You know, this stuff was around. They didn't have all the NFTs. I mean, so there, you know, there was more upside in it. If you wanted to gamble on it, you know, yeah, you know, you, you know, you, it was like a lottery ticket and it paid off. But at this point, there's just not enough upside. I mean, it's been going sideways now for three years. I mean, it, no. it hit the high, almost hit 70,000 in 2021, right? This is 2024. All the hype, uh, all the promotions, um, you know, I, I, think the, I think these ETFs, this was the last chance to sucker in new buyers. And we'll see if, if, if it works, but it may not. I think that people who are buying Bitcoin are buying Bitcoin instead of, you know, some other tech stocks that they might have bought, or maybe they're using money that they would have uh, spent on uh, gambling on sports or lottery tickets, or maybe they're just, um, you know, putting money in there that they would have spent. They, you know, they, they, maybe they would have bought a nicer car or rented a nicer apartment, but instead they're, you know, they're, they're putting some money in Bitcoin because they think they're going to get rich. I don't think it's taking that much of the demand away from gold, because I think most of the demand for gold outside of industry and jewelry is, is coming from um, central banks and, you know, more sophisticated, larger investors. Um, and I think that the older people, I mean, if you look at the customers of Shift Gold, um, you know, our customers are older by and large, and it's the older people, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70 year olds, uh, that have most of the money, you know, I mean, you know, now I've heard the argument that, well, when they're, the kids finally inherit this money, they're going to put it into Bitcoin. Uh, well, you know, by the time, uh, they, they inherit it, we'll see <laughs> because they, they, a, they may grow out of their infatuation with Bitcoin, or they may have lost so much money in Bitcoin that they, that they no longer uh, care about it. No, nobody made it all the way to the end. So you can tell me, do you think Bitcoin's going to, no, nah, do, <laughs> do you think Bitcoin's going to hundred K? That's what you think, isn't it? You keep using that number. That's what you think is you no, think no, Bitcoin's well, really going to go Well, that's the laser. That's the laser beam number, right? That's what everybody put the laser beams on their eyes. No, no, do you no, still but, have but, your laser beams? But what do you, what do you think? Do you still have you, laser you beams think? on your eyes? No, I don't have they, them on. <laughs> no, I don't have them on. Do do you but have? That's what everybody uh, was. That's that's what they were for. It was for Bitcoin, a hundred thousand. So, but so but I don't you, think it's. But you're convinced too. You 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 think it's going to hit a hundred k? I don't think so. I mean, as I said. Oh, that's a telltale sign. No, when you sure. when you go like this, when you when you put your hand on your face after you say something, that means that you, that you're lying. No. You definitely think it's going to 100k. Oh, that's my tell. Yeah, you definitely think <laughs> it's going to 100k, don't you? You really think that? No, I got my. I don't know why my eyes. I got something in my eyes, and it. it's like <laughs> like dust or something. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you finally are coming around. You're you're seeing, even if you're not going to buy it, you at least see that Bitcoin likely is going to do well in the, in the future environment. 